everyone this is Amy welcome to my channel today I am going to do a flat brush design I'm using a fine liner by Westonia a number 16 and a number 14 flat brush by iMagic which you can purchase down below in my affiliate links and a number 12 round brush by iMagic also listed down below the paints I'm using are all folk art paints I'm using aqua Wicker White, Tea Berry, and Yellow Ochre. Now I do use both the enamels and the multi-surface paints. Just a lot of times it's based on what color avail is available, to be honest with you. It's I sometimes the colors I like are not available, and sometimes they have kind of similar colors from one one uh, medium to the other so that's why I use both all right gonna begin with the number 16 put one side into the wicker white one side into the tea berry do some quick blending strokes now technically when you do blending strokes you're supposed to do do it to where you have three quarters of the brush covered with paint I don't necessarily do it that way so do whatever you're comfortable with what I say. Alright, so to begin with, I'm going to do a couple little quick little blending strokes. I'm going to go to start wiggle my brush, come down, and then I'm going to come up, come back down, go over this way, and kind of just roll the brush a little bit. And then I'm going to come back in, do a quick little wave over this direction, and then pull up like that. And I'm going to come up here, do another quick, these are just my little partially opens or buds, however you want to, and you can just finish like that, or you can, if you want, you know, do the wave, come up and down, and then just twist your brush a little bit. On glass, that has a tendency to pick up the paint, so if you want to avoid that, then just leave it, and you can go over it with the next brush stroke if you want. All right, so I'm gonna come over this way, head out a partial over this direction, and then do the same here. Now I am a lefty, and I like to try to point this out whenever I remember to, because the direction I start, like if I start from right to left, you might find it easier to go left to right if you're right-handed. So know that if something just doesn't feel natural to you, that that could very well be the reason. So I'm going to try the other direction. And also, too, when you're doing this, if you feel like you're not getting an opaque coverage, go back over it. You can give it some dry time. Or I hit it with the heat gun hair dryer and then go back over it again. Or just try to make sure that you're covering it nicely as you go. And sometimes that's harder depending on the paint that color that you're using because some of it has more pigment than others. I'm just going to kind of overlap these a little bit, just a tinge. When you're watching this video, if you have any questions or comments once you're done watching, place those comments down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell before leaving. There we go. And I'm going to put another one over this way once again overlapping now my actual design that I did on paper because I always do my design on paper before I put it on glass I actually had some space in between them but with this surface being smaller I have to kind of condense it a little bit which is fine not a biggie there we go and then I am going to Put one little hanging bud down here at the bottom and come out here 
And you can switch them around too where they're leading in different directions too. You don't have to stick with all of them going, you know, like left to right or whatever. If you're able to do it nicely, just do it. All right, so I'm not I'm getting away from the traditional green leaves, going into the yellow ochre with my fine liner, going into the white a little bit, coming out. I'm going to attach my my partial flowers. Just cover up and attach. And then just keep going with it. And here we go. It's very easy. Great practicing surface is waxed paper. If you're looking for a way to practice and you know get the most out of it. Now this here is just a place for me to put some leaves. It's not uh, part of the stem per se. And I'm going to come this way. You probably won't see a whole lot of the stems since these are pretty darn close together. They're right on top of each other actually. Alright, and then what I'm going to do is just kind of swing my stem down this direction. I'm not going to come over that way, which a lot of times I'll just go over that direction. I'm just going to have it come down like this. I'll go over it a few times just to make sure I have thick coverage. I can make it a little thicker, or you could even use the flat brushes. The flat brushes are awesome when it comes to... Uh, making stems. Alright, so I'm just going to have like this one that's going to connect here. This one's coming down here. Then I'm going to swing out a piece over there. Let me add some leaves that direction. Maybe a little bit up this way. And you don't have to make the lines like straight. They can be curvy. That's perfectly fine. And you'll see here in a minute, it probably won't matter a whole lot because I'm going to be filling in with leaves. All right, I'm going to take the next brush, the 14, and do my blending strokes with the yellow ochre and the wicker white. And people, I just keep adding paint as I go. I don't always do a blending stroke. Again, when you paint, you have to find what works for you. I think everybody is different. So I'm not going to say you have to do it a certain way, because you don't. You can do it however you feel that it works for you. Now, one thing you have to be careful when you're painting over paint on the gloss bottle, sometimes it can make it crackle or pull up. So you have to be careful sometimes with painting like that. I'm just going to be honest with you on that one. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. Basic wiggle leaves. I'm not sure what to call them, to be honest with you. That's what I call them. And then I'm just going to come down here and just keep wiggling it and pulling it. And then I'll put a little stem through it. Now I can wait and do that with my fine liner. That's up to me. So I'm just kind of touching this one over here because I don't want to pull the paint out. So sometimes you have to make adjustments. Sometimes you can't just do your typical wiggle um, because it pulls the paint up. So you just have to know when to just lightly touch it. And I have found even if you've given it dry time, it still can happen. So don't think that that will be something that will technically take care of it because it may not necessarily. I'm going to make all these with the yellow ochre on the outer side of the stem or leaves. You can reverse them. You can 
you use some with the white all the way around, some with the white on one side and the yellow ochre on the other side. Again, that's up to you. And let's see, I'm gonna go like this on these. And this is just kind of simulating a folded leaf. Now you can use it to where the stem would actually go in the center here, or you can pretend that the center is down here. That's up to you. But I'm pretending right now that it's going right in here. Okay. And let's see here. Let's do one going this direction. And you can do the full. You don't have to do the folded look on all of these, but that's what I'm doing. All right, we're gonna go up here. And honestly, you could just do a partial leaf like this, or that could be your leaf. It doesn't even have to have a double side. thing would be just to kind of play around with your leaves and let's see if we need one any place else let's kind of go over this way oh, at the bottom here I'm sorry I keep going off the screen and this one's a little bit different because it's both sides are kind of the V is going down as opposed well that one's like that too this one kind of comes out so they're not all identical, and that's fine. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is come in here with the number 12 round brush, place it into the aqua, get it good and covered. And I'm gonna come in here and do just some simple little leaves where I'm pulling and touching. And then come back in here if I want. Doing the same down here. That's why I say you don't, leaves don't have to be green. Sometimes it's just kind of fun to play with colors and make them something different than what they, you would typically find. I'm going to put some going down this way too. Even though that's my stem. We'll do that just to give it some color. Yeah, just use your imagination. It doesn't have to be realistic. Just can be pretty and fun. All right, and I'm gonna come in here, add some this direction. And keep going, keep going, keep going, and keep going. And once again, if you find that this is not opaque enough, then do what you need to do as far as going back over them again. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna stick my fine liner into the aqua. I'm gonna go into the yellow ochre too. Just use a combination of the two colors and come back in here, adding my stem. And I'll just keep touching more paint onto my brush as I go and I'd like for the yellow ochre to show up a little bit more so I'm going to keep adding paint onto it to get the look I want kind of like a combination of both. and you can be loose with this you know just use they don't have to be straight and whatever just you know curve and you can even come out a little bit from these even stick some white in there if you want Pretty easy, right? And I like these, they're nice. Make some fun. They're very colorful, very colorful.
It's always like with my grandkids, I've always given them pieces of paper to draw, paint on, that kind of thing, and not really made it, you know, color within the lines, because I like them using their imagination. But I know they need to, the, they need to actually learn how to color in the lines, but it's really hard for me to do that. I want them to use their own imagination. All right, I'm going to finish up here, put my fine liner into the aqua. And what I'm going to do is just come in here, tap some dots very loosely into the centers. And they don't have to be all separated, but you know, you can do them as a cluster, you can do them separated, you can do a dotting stylus. I'm minimizing tools by doing it this way that you need to have for the for the project. All right, and there you go. Pretty darn simple and very colorful, I think. Very pretty. All right, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. And before you leave, if you would take a moment to share this video on your social network with your family and friends, I would greatly appreciate that. Just hit the share button you'll find underneath the video and it's good to go. All right, until the next time, thanks so much for stopping by. Please stay safe and healthy and you have a good one.